Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and Game of Thrones released some interesting new footage and major clues for season eight in the form of three new teaser promos, or as we say in storytelling logic, the rule of dragon eggs. And I'm gonna break down all the details that you might have missed in all of these promos, and explain the deeper way all this connects to past episodes and to the final season. Spoiler warning, in case my predictions end up being too right, they ruin your life. Okay, let's start with the most cryptic of the three, the one titled Aftermath. This teaser seems to be a bit more artistic, imagery-based, filled with hidden metaphors, or I guess synecdoches or metonymies, technically speaking for all you English majors. And it may be the sort of Game of Thrones teaser that isn't actual footage, but maybe not. It begins with a shot of a tattered Stark flag flapping over the ruins of Winterfell. Notice that ears ringing sound effect. It took me a second to realize it because I hear it all the time. It gives off the impression that we are returning to consciousness after a major concussive hit. And yeah, this past year and a half with no Game of Thrones has felt like coming out of a coma. But this is presumably Winterfell in the aftermath of the destructive battle of Winterfell. And no one is present. There's no dialogue, no echoing of voice of Danny talking about breaking wheels, just some echoes of screams, sword clashes. And if you look closely, there are several little tokens of major characters hidden in the snow. The First is a shot of arrows with arrow heads tipped with dragon glass. We know Gendry was forging these from the season eight trailer and you can actually see the forge area in the Winterfell courtyard now collapsed. And the frame slides to the left to show a statue of a direwolf with a growl sound effect, Jon's direwolf ghost has been confirmed to play a major role in the final season. And although it didn't look like it showed up in the season eight trailer, I actually made another video pointing out where ghost might have snuck into the frame. Next is a shot of the Winterfell kennels. And this thing in the snow is Tyrion's hand of the queen pendant. It's fitting to see it here because back in season one, remember this is where Tyrion woke up before slapping Joffrey. <laughs> By the way, it's also the location where Sansa fed Ramsay Bolton to the dogs in season six. Next we see the Winterfell armory with the roof caved in. Right in the middle there is Arya's sword, Needle. Jon had the sword made for her in this location as a gift before they parted ways in season one. Next, there's a shot of the Winterfell battlements. Specifically, it's a spot where we last saw Sansa and Arya as they spoke their father's words last season. The lone wolf dies, but the pack survives. It's also where we see Sansa in the season eight footage as Drogon flies overhead. Next, there's a shot of this feather, Forrest Gumping down to the ground. This was the same feather Robert Baratheon placed on the grave of Lyanna Stark. And more recently in season five, Sansa placed it back in the statue's hand. At the bottom of the steps is this broken wooden wheelchair. This is the one Bran sits in. And listen to the audio here. Yeah, that sounds like the call of a raven, a nod to Bran's role as the Three-Eyed Raven. In my breakdowns for season seven, I pointed out a few moments where strategically edited raven sound effects were used to indicate Bran's presence, watching over a character's actions. Something similar may be happening here, but more on that later. Next, we see this hand in the snow. This is the golden gauntlet e prosthetic hand of Jaime Lannister. We know he will join Jon and the others against the White Walkers in the Battle of Winterfell. And behind the hand is this chain, and you can see see the three-headed dragon pin on the end of it. This is worn by Daenerys. Notice how it also dangles from this broken wheel, perhaps a nod to her big line, I'm going to break the round spinny thing that makes wagons go. You mean wheel? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to break that. Finally, the least missable is Longclaw, the Valyrian steel sword of Jon Snow, AKA Aegon Targaryen, but I'm gonna keep calling him Jon Snow. In the icy wind of the background, you can barely make out the silhouette of a figure, presumably the Night King, who of course brings winter with him, but maybe not. Like we know what the Night King looks like and what he can do, he's scary as f so why would this teaser shroud this figure's identity in the shadows and mask it? Maybe it's because it's somebody else. We brought up theories before that the White Walkers could resurrect a well-known corpse from the Winterfell crypts during this battle and then turn them back on the Starks as undead whites, like Ned Stark or one of the other Starks buried down there, or a deceased person outside the crypts that they have come across, like Littlefinger, Stannis Baratheon, Rooster Ramsay Bolton, Hodor, maybe all of these people. And and maybe one of these resurrected famous dead people will really be the ones responsible for bringing down Winterfell. Another theory has suggested that maybe the Night King could actually skip this battle altogether and fly Viserion down to King's Landing, wipe out Cersei's forces and the new Golden Company she's getting, and convert all of them to his soldiers, and then double back up north. If that ends up being the case, we could even be seeing Cersei here. Now again, I think this footage is more likely to be metaphorical or synecdochal or metonymal than literal footage from the final 
season. A suggestion that anyone we know and love can die and anyone could become an undead white standing in the background. But if we stretch our imaginations just a bit more, perhaps one reason this imagery seems so interpretive is that it's a vision of the future, something seen through the eyes of Bran. Could that shadowy figure in the background actually be Bran? We do know that he can walk in his visions, and there was that specific raven sound effect I pointed out, perhaps implying his presence observing all of this. So maybe these images of death and doom are a premonition of the three-eyed raven on the eve of battle a nightmare outcome that Bran witnesses, forcing him to reckon with whether or not to share this apocalyptic vision with his family. As we keep those questions in mind, let's move on to another promo shared by HBO titled Together. Now these next two promos are a mix of new footage and old clips that we've already analyzed in my in-depth breakdown of the season eight trailer, so go check that out. But this Together promo leads with a new shot of Tyrion. We must fight together now, or die. Tyrion is flanked by Sansa and Danny. Jon's probably staying at that head table too, and they're all most likely facing the other northern lords as they debate joining forces with the Targaryen invader. The North remembers, and many of them are still feeling burned over the burning of Jon and Sansa's grandfather, Rickard Stark, and their uncle, Brandon, by Danny's father, Mad King Eris. They also probably know the ancient legend of Torin Stark, the king who knelt, who surrendered to the last Targaryen invader, Aegon the Conqueror, and destroyed his reputation among his fellow northerners. So with all this history, I doubt a Lannister like Tyrion will be the diplomat any of them will want to listen to. Now, the framing of this shot is also interesting. Tyrion is framed with Sansa on one shoulder and Danny on the other, two top female authorities who represent different viewpoints. If not an angel and a devil on his shoulders whispering in his ears, at least two angels who passive aggressively side eye each other. We've actually seen this kind of framing before with Ned in season one, deciding whether or not to leave Winterfell to become Robert's hand in King's Landing and investigate the poison of John Aaron. His wife Catelyn was on one shoulder begging him to stay out of the drama, and his maester Lewin was on the other side advising him to honor his oath to serve Robert and defend his king from political conspirators. Similarly, Tyrion here is framed with a character representing his affections and another representing his duty. Then there's this new shot of John and Danny beside a hearth. She faces away from him and he steps out of frame, suggesting a coldness between the two. This could be taking place shortly after Danny learns that John is the legitimate son of her brother Rhaegar, and right heir to the Iron Throne, positioning him with a stronger claim than she has. Definitely an awkward thing to learn about someone you just rocked the boat with. The camera lingers on Danny's braid, which is fashioned as a Dothraki jahak that has grown longer and more complex in season one, as a symbol of her many victories on her warpath back to Westeros. But with the recent loss of Viserion and this new loss of a claim to her long desired Iron Throne, we're kind of seeing Danny more in a state of defeat. Her only option left may be to truly break the spinny round thing altogether and destroy Westeros' monarchical system of government, rather than seek the throne to rule. Now, if you look closely at that fireplace, it does kind of look similar to the one in the Dragonstone map table room, suggesting that this scene could be taking place back there, or maybe the Game of Thrones crew is just reusing a fireplace set piece in their expanded Winterfell set. This promo also shows Beric Dondarrion, with his flaming sword waving on the Hound to join him in battle, or maybe in retreat. The Hound is paralyzed in fear, similar to his reaction to fire in the Battle of Blackwater. F the king. There are also new shots of the Unsullied in the Battle of Winterfell, pressing forward with their spears through the blizzard, and turning their shields to form a phalanx with perfect choreographed timing, kind of like a drill team. And if you look closely at those shields, you can see that they're lined with dragon glass so that they can be used to fend off and cut through White Walkers. There's another quick shot of Cersei turning around alarmed. Now I can't imagine many things that would catch this Mad Queen off guard in the Red Keep, but I sure do hope something does. I've speculated that Arya might redirect down to King's Landing to complete her kill list, with Cersei being the name at the top of it. And if that theory ends up being right and the Night King does come knocking on the Red Keep door, right after Cersei refused to take his threat seriously, the look on her face is gonna be priceless. And there's this new shot of Varys, Tyrion, and Ser Davos at Winterfell looking skyward in surprise. I assume they're looking at one of Daenerys' dragons the way Sansa is in the other shot. But why would these three be surprised by the sight of a dragon? They've been in Danny's company for quite a while now. Maybe the thing they're reacting to isn't the dragon itself but who is riding one of the dragons. And with all the clues that Jon could join Danny as a dragon rider, maybe he will finally mount Rhaegal, the dragon named after his father. And let's quickly move on to the final promo titled Survival. This one opens with a new shot of Jon and Arya in the godswood of Winterfell. We could be seeing the moment that these two finally reunite. Meanwhile, over this footage, we hear the voice of Samwell Tarly. Think back to where we started. And Jon responds. I was just us. 
sounds like Sam is reminding John of their humble beginnings as brothers of the Night's Watch. When they took their vows, John chose to say them at a nearby weirwood tree, since he identified more with the old gods of the north than the new gods worshipped and accepted by the other initiates. Sam ended up joining John so he wouldn't be alone. Maybe Sam is bringing up this memory to soften the awkward news he's about to deliver to John about his true lineage. There's also a quick shot of John in the crypts of Winterfell lighting candles. He appears to be at the grave of Ned Stark here, perhaps reflecting on Ned's decision to lie to John about his birth and the burden that that lie placed on both of them. And finally, there's a new look at the courtyard of Winterfell as fire blazes on all sides of the castle. Perhaps part of their strategy is to create a ring of fire around it to keep the whites out so that only the Night King and the other White Walkers could pass through, because we know that they can briefly extinguish fire and pass through. And we see that shot of Jamie again, and it sounds like he's yelling, Braun? We haven't seen any shots of Bronn in this footage. I don't imagine that he would want to join Jaime in this battle up north, but if Jaime's able to talk him into it, Bronn's most useful contribution to this battle would probably be his expertise operating the Scorpion. Remember that giant anti-dragon crossbow that he fired at Drogon in the battle last season? If they can rig up one of those spears so that it's on fire, it could be a very useful weapon against Viserion. Say, if for some reason Drogon and Rhaegal are unable to fight him, I would just love to see Bronn taking charge of the surface-to-air defense once more. Do you think the Battle of Winterfell will end in defeat, as the aftermath teaser suggests? Or do you think the heroes could just get away so that the survivors of this battle, however few there may be, are able to face the Night King in a more intimate final showdown? Comment down below with your thoughts and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss. And subscribe to New Rockstars for, in my less than humble opinion, the most comprehensive coverage of Game of Thrones missable details, Easter eggs, and subtle cinematic tricks. This channel will have in-depth breakdowns of each episode, plus next day reactions, and you can get it all even sooner by subscribing to our Game of Thrones podcast feed, Westeros Weekly, wherever you get your podcasts. And when you tweet us your questions, use the hashtag Westeros Weekly so that we can see it and feature them in our episodes. Finally, if you plan to be at VidCon this June, we would love to see you, so please tweet at VidCon to ask them for a new Rockstars panel, a live show, or a meet and greet so that we can tell you all in person how much we appreciate your support. Thank you for watching. Oh, uh, Raven. Oh. Oh, look, he, uh... Sent me a little message, I guess. Oh my God. Wow, that is the meanest cyberbullying I've ever received. <laughs>